What's going on everybody? Brent Simmons here with Restoration Roofing. Today I want to do a little different format. I want to take you behind the scenes on what we're having to do with just about every single insurance claim. This is what we call a repair attempt, okay? It's Sunday. We're in the we're the in the beginning of August. I'm a little casual today. That's why I got the hat on backwards. But I just want y'all to see this because I think it's really important. So we're gonna jump right into the video. And as we play the video, I'm gonna pause it and we're going to i'm going to talk through basically what's going on and why the insurance company uh shouldn't be doing what they're doing all right so let's go all right so this is Brent Simmons restoration roofing we've identified one of the shingles that has wind damage you can see that one um and um uh, you can see the condition of the shingles above it. So I've got the Owens Corning Oak Ridge uh, Teak that you guys recommended. Uh, what we're gonna do is see if we can repair this without damaging any other shingles. All right, I'm, I'm gonna pause right there. Um, so you can see in the video that I picked a shingle that had already been identified as being a damaged shingle. A little bit of backstory here, this roof has an acknowledged 50 damaged shingles. The roof is only about 3,300 square feet. So you've got 50 damaged shingles on a 32 square roof. Um, I would say pre-February of 2021, this roof would have been approved on the spot and the adjuster would have, wrote, would have uh, written a check um, and given it directly to the customer. But here we are. Um, I've been working this claim for about two months. Now, the second point I want to make is I talk about the Owens Corning Oak Ridge Teak. During the first adjuster's meeting, we had to remove a shingle so the adjuster could send it off to their laboratory or whatever it is they use um, to identify what shingle is actually on the roof. So that's why I said this is the shingle you guys picked. All right, let's play. So this shingle's already, the seal's already completely broken because of the wind. Getting the nails out of the top of it. They're coming right out. I do this for a minute, so I'm gonna skip to a minute 30 right now. All right. Above here. So I got the, the nails out of the shingle I'm replacing. Um, now I gotta get the nails out of the shingle above it. Gotta break whatever's left of that seal. That's the old shingle. All right, slid right out. This is what you guys recommend. All right. There's a difference in the width. Difference in width, right there, and a difference in height. Let's get in close. All right, I'm gonna pause right, right I'm here. I'm gonna go ahead. And All right, 
so the reason um, I'm doing this, you know, I took I took uh, the new shingle that they want, that, you know, that they said is the proper shingle to repair with, and I laid it on the roof, and then I took the old shingle that I had removed and put it on top of it. Uh, what I'm trying to demonstrate right here to the insurance company is that uh, the shingle that they're wanting me to repair uh, this roof with is too big or it's, it's larger than the existing shingle. Um, that's, this is part of the second point that we drove home, uh, that we, we were trying to drive home with this repair temp video is that they're not compatible. And I'll touch more on that at the end. Cause I've got a whole segment where I basically tell whoever ends up watching this video that, um, that it's not going to work and it'll never seal. Uh, but I, I wanted to show that, um, before I put the shingle in, let's play. Try to install it. Here we go. I've got my nails. I'm starting on that top row of shingles, um, putting the nails back that we removed. It's hot just watching this video. It was ridiculously hot on this roof. If you're ever doing something like this, you wanna make sure you wear gloves. This roof was about, I think I, I read it at about 150, 152 degrees on this summer day. Ah, got my, hold on, got my glove. Right. Shoot. So after I got the nails up there on the second row of shingles, I went ahead and started nailing um, the shingle that, I, that I'm using to do this repair attempt. So I put six nails. These nails, I mean, these, these shingles require six nails, so I'm putting six nails in it. Stupid glove. Take my glove off because lose the glove real quick. I kept on nailing my glove to the roof. That's never fun. Pause real quick. So I know this is kind of boring. I mean, you're just watching me put nails in shingles, right? But I'm treating this as if it is a real repair. We want a real life situation where, I mean, like if this works, it will work and I will do the repair, right? Um, so that's why I'm putting all the nails back that I took off the top row and I'm putting six nails in the brand new shingle. Uh, because we're trying to find, we're trying to follow all the manufacturer specifications and codes um, to determine is this a viable repair and is this something that's to code and and that we would actually be able to put a warranty on. 
All right, let's play. kind of tricky. I want to stay away from that keyway. So these shingles are literally falling apart as I'm doing this. We have a lot more degranulation up here. Um, these have since become completely unsealed just in the process of doing this. We got a crease here. These shingles are far too old and too brittle pause it to be right now. repaired. So, so that that was my main point is the repairability of the roof. Okay, even if there was a perfect match of the shingles, if the roof is too brittle and too old, you can't repair it. Because let's think about this: if I if I replace one shingle and I damage the shingle above it, right? Because it's so brittle. Now I have to come in and replace the shingle that that shingle that was damaged. So what's going to happen as I keep on doing it? As I keep on having to fold up the shingle above to get my nails in where I'm repairing, it's likely that, that the shingles are going to continue to crease and start losing their granules. And I, I only folded the shingles up enough to where I could get my hammer in there without hitting the edge of the shingle. And you can see that right here, we're at about 8 minutes and 23 seconds, you can see how the granules, there's like large lines going across the shingle that weren't there before. Um, during, I don't, you may or may not be able to hear it. I could hear it, but as I was doing this repair attempt, you can literally hear the little granules just popping off, uh, as I'm doing this, because this is an old brittle roof. Now, architectural shingles or laminated shingles, they have, they basically consist of two layers. Okay. You have a top layer that gives it that three dimension look. So those little pieces that are coming down that stick up a little bit higher, um, we call those dragon's teeth. Okay. Um, those on the shingle above actually came unsealed completely. So, um, we would have to repair the shingle above the originally damaged shingle. All right, I'm gonna hit play and I'll give you some more insight in a minute. Um, let's go. And we're supposed to do, I think y'all guys wrote up like 50 shingles on here. This roof is going to be totaled by the time we get done with 50 shingles. So there you have it. The shingle's too big. Even though you say it's a match, it's too big. We can't repair it. We can't repair it and put a warranty on it. Thank you. All right, pause right there. Okay. So I got a little bit emotional there because um, really... I don't know if I said this, but in February, the whole insurance claim game changed for everybody. It's like all the carriers uh, really decided to clamp down on paying for these claims. Um, I've been doing this. I've been doing like residential roofing for six years now. Prior to this year, only had one client sue their insurance company. Um, this year alone, I've had three. So, and we're in August. So it just, that's kind of, that's kind of telling about what's going on here. Insurance companies aren't doing the right thing. Okay. So back to the video, that was my point. Number one was repairability. Can you even repair it with the shingles around it in the current condition that they're in? Point number two, which is this little piece on the end that I had to come back and, and re-record because I was, I was kind of ticked off about what they were wanting me to do. Um, anyways, let me just hit play and then I'll talk about it at the end. Let's go. I also want to point out something that I meant to add um, while I was doing the repair attempt, but since this shingle, this is the new one, since it is wider than the original shingle, it creates a couple, it's wider and it's taller. So this has a larger exposure than all the other shingles around it. The sealant strip for these shingles is below the shingle. It's actually attached here. So this 
since it is resting on top of this shingle, is never going to seal. Furthermore, this sealant strip here is going to have a hard time because there's gonna be cases where it, it will fall in between the laminated sections. So you're gonna have sections where it's sealed and nothing. So what's gonna happen when the first 20 to 30 mile an hour wind hits, this is going to start lifting. Um, when that happens, you know, it's gonna be, you know, uh, it's gonna keep on going. So even right here, the farther up I go, if I were to continue to repair this, this exposure is going to get more and more out of line with this. So as I go up, I line up, I line up where it should go here. Now this next row is gonna be even farther down. So you're gonna end up with the situation here on the ends where you'll have whole sections that are just ready to blow off because they never had the chance to seal. All right, so that's the end of the video. What I really wanted to say um, <laughs> without, and it would I, I would have been kind of a jerk if I said it, but what I really wanted to say is that if I were to do this repair the way they want me to do it and come out here and replace 50 shingles, which would, which would res result in probably 50 more shingles that had to be replaced simply because they got damaged and saw in the first 50, um, and this roof were to start getting more wind damage, what the insurance company probably would have done then, you know, a year or so down the road, is come out, inspect it, and then deny the whole thing because of installation error or improper installation. See, you get caught in like these catch-22 uh, situations here. But um, this was the second point of my video, and I almost left the house with even without even really touching on it because I was... It was hot and I was just kind of like reading the claim where they said 50 damaged shingles and the fact that, that we're having to do this now, but it's fine. It's my job. I'm not complaining, but I just want what's be best for my customers. So I was kind of ticked off, I guess, for them. Um, but the problem with the shingles being larger than the existing shingles is really two things on the sides. You could see in the video, if this is the old shingle and this is a new one, it's actually resting on top of the shingle that it should just butt up against. So what's happening is where it's resting on top, it's creating a little air gap here where that sealant is never allowed, it will never make contact with a shingle below it and it'll never seal. So every single one of those little corners, it's like this, eventually, guaranteed, are going to lift up in the wind and it's just going to start blowing the shingles off and, and, you know, causing further damage. The second thing is since the shingles are taller, when I slide them back in there with the old shingles, they're not resting on the same spot that the old shingles used to rest at. They're actually the sealant strip, which seals to the shingle below it is actually sitting further down um, and where those laminated areas are, where it's high and low and high and low, on the low spots, the sealant's not even making contact. So on one shingle, you've got four to five, really six, air gaps where wind can just scoop it up and start damaging uh, the shingles. So we're done with the video. I just wanted to like just talk about how this this is what's going on. If if you're new to the roofing industry, you're you're just starting out, get ready for this. This is not how it used to be. I mean, used to uh, meaning last year. It really started changing around February and the insurance carriers will say, oh, well, we had all these storms and stuff in Texas. Well, this is Tennessee. It's not Texas. So in my opinion, it's not fair to punish policyholders um, that are down here or that are, you know, anywhere else besides, it doesn't matter. You shouldn't punish anybody, right? Um, that's why you pay for insurance like this. Um, but literally a year ago, I could have had seven damaged shingles on this roof and the adjuster would identify that there's not a proper match on the spot and probably write a check on the spot. Now, it's like they're really weeding out the roofers who are lazy and don't want to do this. Um, but that's not restoration roofing. We'll fight these things for months and months and months and months. So I wanted to get this video out there 
if you're a homeowner in the process of getting a claim, or I mean, you have a claim and you're dealing with this, you're not the only one. Uh, this is happening across the board. And if you're still watching this video, I do want to say thank you for watching this video. I try to put out content that's informative and helps people. Um, makes me feel good too about myself a little bit. So anyways, um, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and like the video. And if you have any questions, comments, anything, type them below. I always read them and I always respond. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.